So in my last project, we poured this patio and we really wanted a gazebo to finish it off. So I headed to Costco, found a great deal on a gazebo in the showroom. Got some guys to help me load it up there and I brought it home. So it will fit in a Ford F-150. This thing was really heavy to get out of the truck, so I did need help with it. And now it's time to build it. Let's see how this goes. All right, I'm thinking the instructions will be in the first box, so fingers crossed. And there they are. All right. We are starting here at 1025 just because I wanted to see how long it would take me to look through the instructions and unbox it. There are over 95 pieces in here. So I'm going to read the instructions, which isn't normally my go-to. Right here it says, do not attempt to install alone. Eh, most of you know me. I will be attempting to install most of this myself. But luckily, my husband works from home, so when I need to, I can go grab him and haul him out to help me. So one of the things that I really liked about these instructions that made it really easy are that any time it asks for a board, it has a number right there next to it. 1053 is that board. And then on the actual board, the number is on it. So it takes out a lot of the guesswork for you. That makes it really nice when you have over 95 pieces. Now right away, I had a board with a little bit of damage on the edge there. It made me a little nervous. I was worried that this was going to be one of those projects that you pull it out of the box and there's damage all over it. But I was really surprised to find that that was the only damage that I found in these full three boxes of almost a hundred pieces of wood and additional accessories. So I think that's really good. Took me about an hour here to unbox everything. Then I had to run it around to the back patio. So the unboxing and taking it out to the patio took me about two hours. So this project is going to take you some time. It is definitely not a one-day project. Now, of course, if you had those four people they suggested, it might go quicker. And here I am doing it on my own, as I said. So I'm using a uh, long board to help me with some of these big posts just because they were really heavy. Now, I will say in the beginning, it seems overwhelming to start this build. I mean, there are pages of instructions, but I just started one step at a time and it goes very easy and the instructions are easy to follow. So don't be overwhelmed. The nice thing is that most of the screw bits and everything that you need are included. You just need the cordless drill, but Everything that you need is included here, so that's nice. You don't have to go buy special tools for it. The wood is a little bit soft, so you want to be careful when doing things. Like right here, I put a board underneath it when pounding into it because anything like a rock underneath it or anything that you pound into is going to dent that wood. So just be very careful with it when you're putting it together that you're not scratching it up or denting it. But I was able to do it and not have any issues with it. So it's definitely something that you can do. Now, one thing that I'll point out is that all of these boards were straight. There were no issues with the boards not fitting together because they were curved or had any issues like that. This is actually something I'm not used to. I usually buy wood from the big hardware store in town and... I swear, most of those boards are going around a corner. So I was very pleased with how this all went together. At this point, I had all the posts together 
and the support beams. So I had to go grab my husband and have him help me put it all together. It's nice because it's broken up into little chunks. So you put together the posts and the support beams. Then you put that all together so you have your frame. And then you move on to the roof. So at this point, there was a lot of debate and looking through the instructions to make sure that we had everything in the right spot and everything ready to go. Uh, because when you have these heavy posts up, you don't want to be sitting there trying to figure out the instructions at that point. Now they do suggest that you have four people at this point. And if you are 6'4", it's very helpful. You can see that uh, I had to use the edge there to stand up because I wasn't quite tall enough. But again, we did it with two. But what we did find was that we used clamps just to help hold it in place so that we could set up two boards at a time and have the clamps to help hold it in place for us. Now my husband helped me set up the four posts and then I went around and just made sure that everything was leveled up because you want to make sure that everything is level straight up and down and that you have the correct spacing from each post as well as diagonally because when you put up that roofing if you aren't square and everything isn't correct in there your roof isn't going to fit together right. So the patio drains right in the corner where the gazebo is. Now unfortunately that's pretty poor planning so we won't be able to have a carpet in the gazebo that I was hoping for but the nice thing is the water does drain right off so it doesn't really sit there and if we put in gutters it should help with some of the runoff as well and now for the roofing you put together each of the four sections and then you put it all up and hook them together now the only tricky part i had here are that there are so many different parts there are 11 different screws so at times i put the wrong screw in the wrong spot and i actually had to go back and change out each of the screws so that I could use the longer ones somewhere else where they were needed. Each of the roofing pieces come with this plastic over the top that you take off and this is amazing. It really protected those pieces. So all of my pieces came perfect. No dents, no scratches. You just line it up on the boards and then you just screw it in using the bit that they send with. This whole project seemed totally overwhelming but it went together really easy. Now it has these pieces that go on the bottom of the roof that just direct the rain so that the rain comes down the roof and goes straight off rather than coming off and kind of going everywhere. And again I said uh, we will probably put in some gutters that will go right below it in time just to drain the water off. Now at this point it would help to have four adults to put up this roof. We had two adults and two kids and we made it work. Wasn't, wasn't easy. There was some tweaking of the roof here and there. It went together. It, it wasn't too hard. Again, anybody can do this. I would suggest getting four adults for this part. And now to test out how strong this is. Can hold me. I think you're good to go. And the next step not needed but I wanted some lights for ambiance so I ordered some hooks from Amazon that just screwed right in. We put them on the inside and we ordered some lights that hook right into them. And there's my helper putting in the light bulb for me. And it's all done. Let me walk you through and show you some of the details that I really like about it. So I really like the stain on the wood. It's a light brown color and it goes really well here, accenting all the concrete and the gray here. 
And let me show you the base that it has here. It's nice, it has something that goes around the base just to decorate it up. And you can see the metal part down there that we will be bolting into the concrete before the winds and the winter get here. I like the black hardware. Um, it's all showing on the outside and the inside, so you want something that's going to look good and doesn't look like it's going to rust. And then they thought through adding in pieces on the edges here that just dress it up and make it look nice so you don't see the ends of the board right there in the corner. Let me get a look up on the roof there so you can kind of see the color a little more and what it looks like. So far, all the debris and the water have come right off of it. No leaking on the inside. Okay, on the inside here, you can see over there is the Yardistry uh, logo that you can put up. You can choose not to as well. And here's a look around the inside. It's really roomy. You can see that we already put up some heaters in here, but they aren't quite hooked up. We'll get those before the winter, and we will also probably put a fan in the middle there just in case it gets warm out here. And not sure if you can tell, but there is a lot of headroom in here. So you can stand, we can put a fan in here, and there's room for a lot of furniture. So overall, we are really happy with this. Um, we need to get some new furniture in there, but right now we'll just use what's there.